Hi and welcome to a Planet Zoo education experience. I'm Elt and I'm one of the community managers here at Frontier. Today we're at Shepherd Wildlife Park so we can learn a little bit about some animals and right now we're going to be having a keeper talk where we learn about the meerkats from the Planet Zoo Africa pack. <laughs> Before we get started, we do have to feed them. We do, they are getting rather impatient. So if you'd they like are. to place this down. Of course. And what they're eating today, they're eating mealworms. <laughs> uh, they've also got some dog biscuits. And we like to put them in here so they don't uh, over-engorge themselves. Um, if you'd like to put that down as well. Of course. Uh, and this is uh, a bit of enrichment for them. It's really interesting. It sort of simulates how they forage for food in the wild without having to hide the food with them in here. Because if they see us hiding it when they're in here, um, they'll instantly know where it is. So if we place these about, as you can see, they are impatient, they love their food. In captivity, we feed them lots of bugs, they have lots of insects, they love, love mealworms, they love crickets, they love moria worms and all sorts of things that you would feed uh, maybe your reptiles. Um, and we also feed them dog biscuits. Now dog biscuits are really good for them because they contain all sorts of nutrients that are great for dogs. Um, lots of sort of iron and fibres and things like that and it also gives them some good coat, uh, coat quality. Alongside this we like to give them carrots, they're really into carrots uh, and other sort of root veg. They're not as big a fan of fruit um, but they are, uh, as I said, opportunistic feeders so they do tend to eat anything they get their hands on. Um, we also give them mice and chicks that we give to some of our other carnivores on the section. Um, in the wild it's somewhat similar, they do have a lot of insects in their diet. They will eat termites, ants, all sorts of things. They also eat scorpions and it's very interesting how they teach their young how to eat scorpions. Um, a mother will present the child, the baby meerkat, with a scorpion with its stinger nipped off and they will present the scorpion to the child and the, the baby meerkat has to then learn how to, how to eat the scorpion without getting stung. And this goes on gradually until eventually they're presented with a full scorpion and, this, and the mother is then saying, right, it's your time now, you need to learn how to do this. And this is presented through entire generations. Generations of meerkats are able to, are able to eat scorpions because of this sort of teaching. They're very recognisable, everyone loves a meerkat. And they're very recognisable because of their face. They have these black marks uh, below their eyes, much like you'd find in a baseball player. This is for stopping the, the glare of the sun on their eyes. It's a natural evolutionary trait which is perfect for when you live in such a bright, harsh, sunny environment. Um, they are a diurnal species, which means they live, uh, they wake up during the day and they go to sleep at night. Now, where they sleep, they sleep in massive colonies uh, of up to 30 individuals, where they burrowed down and made lots of tunnels that can become really, really complex. They will protect these tunnels with their lives. So there will always be a sentry on guard looking out for any uh, various predators, such as eagles uh, and hawks and things like that. Meerkats are a very, very territorial species. We, uh, we think of them as being quite cute and sweet. Um, they're actually quite fearsome. If I was to put my hand down now, I would probably lose a finger. Um, you have warned us about the bites. Yeah, the bites can be <laughs> quite, quite horrible. Um, they have very, very sharp teeth. They obviously, they use these to get through um, so like chicks and mice, small rodents and all sorts of things like that. Um, but they also have, they're quite dexterous with their hands, so they're used to digging. And these, uh, this, um, enrichment that we've put out for them sort of allows them to forage and, and rustle around uh, using their hands. So this promotes sort of natural digging uh, aspects as well as foraging behaviour. Um, so meerkats live in a matriarchal society which is female dominant. There will be one alpha female um, and then they often live as a family unit with their sisters uh, and some males also. Now only the alpha female is permitted to breed. So if it came that the non-alpha female has babies, the alpha female will actually kill these babies to ensure that it's just her genetics that carries on through the generations. But they do exhibit very altruistic behaviours in the sense that the other female meerkats will take turns in nursing the baby meerkats, they help to look after the baby meerkats, and also being on sentry duty, putting yourself in danger, that is an example of altruistic behaviour. So you said it's normally a matriarchal species, does that mean it's primarily girls you've got here? So uh, in our colony here we do have primarily girls, we do have a couple of castrated males um, and they make up our full colony. Obviously in the, in the wild it would be uh, a, ma a majorly female colony with a, a couple of males here and there. A lot of the time the males are sort of cast out and they all, they'll go and join other colonies and things like that. So if a, if a female has male young 
uh, what we call a kit. They say meerkat kit is a baby meerkat. Um, when the male grows up, a lot of the time they'll go and they'll find their own colony. What is interesting about our colony dynamic here is that we don't really have as strong of an alpha female as we'd like. So in the wild, when an alpha female dies, um, what happens is there's a sort of a fight for that dominance and so a new member of the family will take over and become that alpha female. However, here, we don't have that presence um, and that means a lot of the time our meerkats will sort of get a bit boisterous with each other and scrap for food because there's no one there to really correct this behaviour. Um, in captivity, there are a few things that we can do to correct this. A lot of the things that we like to do is use scent. So we can use the various perfumes and other smelly things that get the meerkats really interested and they'll be looking around for ages at this and they sort of forget about food and sort of like having scraps with each other. One keeps burying my food. Hello. You can see, yeah, they, are, <laughs> they are very good diggers. Um, and they're really showing off that behaviour. So you have six here at Shepworth Wildlife Park. How are they doing conservation? So, um, conservation-wise, uh, these guys are really, really doing well. They're thriving. Um, we, uh, several years ago, they were sort of on the decline. This was due to sort of um, illegal pet trade and things like that. However, their presence in like popular culture, media, has really skyrocketed the conservation efforts for these guys. They're now least concerned on the IUCN red list. So that's an absolute win for conservation, um, both in the wild and in zoos. They've definitely had some good press and good media opportunities in the last they few years. They definitely have. They're very <laughs> famous. Are they a fan favourite when people come round to Shepherds? They are, especially the little kids. The little kids love to see these guys. Um, they're so talkative, they're so social. It's just, it's really interesting to see uh, such a small little thing make so much noise and uh, display such interesting behaviours. Um, and I think they're really good at educating children as well on how, how various um, mammals would behave in the wild, really. We definitely love uh, their famous position, the way they stand, getting up there with the little paws and the hind legs. It is, it is very cute. Uh, is there a reason that they particularly do that? So that's, uh, that's just them sentrying. It's, um, it's the easiest way that they can see um, all around. So they'll often find the highest point of ground and then they'll look around like this and obviously standing on your legs, you're gonna see a lot further than yep. you are. And then it also allows them to look up in the sky quite easily because it'll be a lot easier to look up from the sky when you're on your hind legs. It prevents as many attacks from bird of prey. They'll release an alarm call when they see a bird of prey. And from this point, they will uh, get inside, get into shelter where they'll be safe. Makes sense. That's why I do the same thing when I lose my parents in the shopping centre. Sadly, that's all we've got time for. But thank you so much, TK, for everything that you've told us today. Thank you very much. You had fun? I did have fun. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank you guys for helping us and supporting the Shepworth Wildlife Conservation Charity. This has been a Planet Zoo education experience and you can support Shepworth Wildlife Conservation Charity by checking out all of the links down below. Have you loved hearing about the meerkats? Let us know what your favourite meerkat fact was down in the comments. Uh, but before we head off, I am going to do my own hand at feeding some meerkats. So, hey guys! <laughs> <laughs>